If you're using my book, Holistic Tarot, to learn tarot, and if you're anything like me, you're going to want to see the primary sources for yourself. So that's why the book comes with 31 pages of endnotes where you'll find all the works I've cited and so much more. So please do not neglect the endnotes. Now, how do you use the independent tarot study course I've put together? If you want to turn your copy of Holistic Tarot and Study Guides I provide into a comprehensive independent study course on tarot, then start with a tarot journal. Get a three ring binder for each level. So for the beginner level study guide, consolidate all things related to the beginner level in one binder. For the intermediate level, a second three ring binder. For the advanced level, a third three ring binder. Beginner. Let's start with the beginner study guide. You'll want one three ring binder dedicated just to this study level. Also get a set of five tab section dividers or create your own like I did. We'll be organizing the binder into five sections. Study guide. Print out the study guide along with any of the supplemental handouts that pique your interest. These all go under the first tab study guide. Dedicate an entire section to the Major Arcana. This section will be entries on card meanings for all the Majors. Also, dedicate an entire section to the Four Suits of the Minor Arcana. This section will be entries on card meanings for all of the Minors. I recommend organizing this section in the order of suits that appear in Holistic Tarot, Wands, Cups, Swords, and Pentacles. Leave a bunch of loose leaf paper in the section readings to log your practice readings. Date each reading, draw diagrams, note the cards you had drawn, the tarot spreads you used, or even decks used, and record all impressions of your tarot readings. Really, this is how you're going to master tarot, by actual practice of reading. The final tab for your beginner's binder will be printouts or notes on anything interesting that is tarot related that you come across during your beginner level study of tarot. Intermediate. Print out the intermediate study guide and keep it under the first tab of your binder. Use the study guide to track your progress through the book Holistic Tarot. Techniques. Printouts for tarot spreads at the intermediate level and other tarot techniques you're working with should go under this second tab. You'll also want to continue to keep a log of all readings you're doing. Date the readings and be sure to write a follow-up post-impressions to validate or learn from the forecasts you're projecting through your tarot readings. References. Organize all the reference materials you're acquiring during your intermediate level of tarot study and keep it in your binder. Finally, make space for miscellaneous notes and documents that are tarot related but might not go anywhere else in your binder. For the binder to keep all of your advanced tarot coursework, again, opt for the same five tabs as the intermediate binder, but now with entirely different content, presumably at the advanced level. And there you have it, how you can organize your notes when using Holistic Tarot as the textbook for your independent tarot studies. If you're using my book to learn tarot, then start with a Rider Waite Smith deck. I'm not saying all beginners need to learn tarot through the Rider Waite Smith tradition, but my book is keyed to the Rider Waite Smith, so if you're using my book, it kind of makes sense to go with the deck tradition that the book is based on. I'll cover some RWS decks that I like for beginners. I'm loving the Smith Waite Centennial Tarot by US Games, which really is an incredible replica of the original. I also like the Golden Universal Tarot by Los Garabeo, but it does not have any card titles, which might get confusing if you're a novice. The Robin Wood Tarot is another good beginner's Rider Waite Smith Tarot deck, one with pagan influences. The Llewellyn Tarot has soft, subdued imagery and is considered a classic, though there are marked differences between this deck and the original RWS card names. For a more modern and multicultural deck that combines fantasy with digital art, check out the Tarot Illuminati. It's a stunner. Of course, most of us learned tarot on the classic Yellow Box Rider Waite 1971. I would recommend any of these RWS-based tarot decks for beginners learning in the RWS tradition. To familiarize yourself with tarot basics, learn the cards in sections. For example, Day 1, 
Study the imagery on and read the cyclopedia entries for The Fool Through the Chariot. That, by the way, is the first septenary of the major arcana. These cards help us to make sense of ourselves. Understanding these cards represent understanding of the inner self. The first septenary of the majors symbolizes the path to self-discovery. Day 2. Do the same for Strength through Temperance. These cards make up the second septenary of the major arcana. They represent the interactive relationship between man and man, or man and his environment. This is about understanding the world around you and attaining wisdom about the material world. Day 3. The Devil to the World the final or third septenary of the major arcana represents the spiritual relationship between man and divinity. This is about understanding the divine realms. This is the decided path for cultivating wisdom. You could also say it's about understanding your higher self. The third septenary of the majors symbolizes the path of transcendence. As you study these cards, don't just read about the card meanings from one source, like holistic tarot. Gather card interpretations from many sources and begin to synthesize the many facets of the cards for yourself. Day 4, the suit of wands. And by the way, when I say day, you could change it to week. Week 1, week 2, week 3, and now week 4, or month. Whatever timetable works with your personal schedule. So let me just say personal module. Module 4, the suit of wands. Philosophically, the suit of wands represents the work that we do, what drives us, the vehicle of our will, the engine of human creativity and ingenuity. Module 5, the suit of cups. This is the suit of emotional value, what we are sentimental about. How do we navigate relationships? What is the parabolic quest of the human spirit? Who are you as defined by who you love? Who are you as defined by what you wish for? What are the defining emotions of a situation? Module 6, the suit of swords. What fears do we seek to conquer? What is the nature of our pain that forges the iron will for glory and achievement? How does our intellectual capabilities work for us and work against us? Examine your social interactions. This is the marketplace of ideas, of discourse, battles, wounds, victories, and pyrrhic victories. Then we get to Module 7, the suit of pentacles, or coins. This is personal and social economy. How do you interact in the material realm with your environment, the earth around you, and the resources availed to you? How do you turn your productivity into material gains? This is commerce, the marketplace of goods and services. This is the proletariat turning productivity into a dynasty. I've set out a course syllabus for you to guide you through independent study of tarot that will get you to a level of proficiency you're proud of. A great way to incorporate tarot into your everyday life is to pull a card on the last day of a month to prognosticate the upcoming month. So at the end of March, I might shuffle my deck and pull a card for April. Then at the beginning, when I'm not yet familiar with card meanings, look up the entry for that card in Holistic Tarot. Supplement that research with many other sources. There are so many incredible resources that are free online these days on card meanings. Then write a cohesive personal impression or interpretation of what you think that card means for your month of April. Memorialize it in written reading form or in notes to yourself. At the end of the month, reflect back on the events that took place and think about how that measures up to your tarot card meaning. You don't have to limit it to a single tarot card. Use any tarot spread instructed from Holistic Tarot and practice the various tarot spreads each time applied to a reading for a month to come. Make sure you log your notes and write up post-impressions. So much of understanding card meanings at more nuanced or deeper levels for myself came from the post-impressions. It's how you begin to form your personal bond with the cards, and slowly but surely, you won't even need holistic tarot anymore. You'll find that you have your own personalized set of card meanings and how you specifically connect to your cards, what the cards of tarot mean for you when you pull them in readings. 
I've also got a free online workshop on an offshoot topic relating to tarot linked below, a comparative analysis of fortune telling and divination in tarot. It's free, so be sure to check it out. Did you find the opening of the key or OOTK divinatory operation of interest to you? Deep dive into it and master the OOTK with my multimedia online course, Learning the Opening of the Key. It comes with an easy to follow workbook on all things OOTK, plus dozens of pages of handouts to help you attain proficiency in the various metaphysical branches of study that you need background knowledge in to work functionally with the OOTK. While holistic tarot is more of a no-nonsense, grounded, and rational-based approach to tarot reading, explore deeper realms of tarot with my course, Tarot as a Tool for Craft. Tarot as a Tool for Craft is the tarot course you take after you've completed the Holistic Tarot Companion course through all three study guides. Be sure to check out all offerings I have available under Course Offerings. So, why tarot? Well, tarot helps you to diagnose your problems. It helps you to understand the symptoms you are experiencing and then helps you to troubleshoot your life. How? By helping you optimize your own creativity, your own intuition, and, if I may, tapping into this incredible and potent tool that occultists of times past have created for us. Tarot is the legacy of Western metaphysical practitioners, a technology that the collective body of these practitioners have left us with. That is why a classical understanding of card meanings, working with tarot spreads and operations used by the masters is, at the very least, an informative exercise for the budding tarot reader. Holistic tarot represents one methodical approach to learning and studying tarot from the beginner level toward achieving personal mastery. Such an approach isn't for everyone and it's more important for you to find a learning style that works for you than to force yourself to work with my book. But if you enjoy academic rigor, perhaps because you've achieved levels of education to doctorate degrees, so now you're stuck in certain ivory tower pedagogical approaches, or you tend to be more cerebral and analytical, then holistic tarot is absolutely the methodical approach to learning tarot for you. To you, I hope this video has given you a clear sense of direction for how to work with your copy of Holistic Tarot and starting your tarot journal, a three-ring binder.